Beneath the high desert of Nevada lies a mineral deposit worth an estimated $1.5 trillion, and right now, billions are being pumped into extracting it. Nevada holds roughly 85% of all known lithium deposits in the United States, making this single state the linchpin in America's plan to break free from foreign energy dependence. Lithium powers everything from electric vehicle batteries to grid-scale energy storage, and the United States has spent decades buying nearly all of it from overseas. China controls 65-70% to 70 of global lithium refining, while Chile and Argentina supply almost all American imports. That vulnerability is exactly what Nevada's new mining operations aim to fix, and by the end of this decade, production here could supply batteries for over 1 million electric vehicles annually. The story behind these deposits starts with a geological event 16 million years in the making, and what's happening now involves sacred indigenous lands, billion-dollar federal loans, and a race against time to secure domestic supply chains before global demand explodes sevenfold. The reason Nevada sits on such extraordinary lithium wealth traces back to one of the most violent volcanic events in North American history. The McDermott Caldera, straddling the Nevada-Oregon border, formed when the Yellowstone hotspot unleashed a blast that ejected roughly 1,000 cubic kilometers of material, leaving behind an enormous depression in the Earth. What made this event different from other Yellowstone eruptions came down to water. A lake filled the caldera and accumulated volcanic sediments over 700,000 years, and unlike similar formations along the hotspot's path, this one never developed the fault networks that would have allowed the lithium to escape. Geologists call it a closed hydrologic system, which meant every bit of lithium that accumulated simply stayed put. Hot fluids rising through cooling magma pulled lithium from volcanic glass and deposited it into clay minerals, a process that concentrated the element to between 1.3 and 2.4% by weight in the richest zones. Scientists now estimate the McDermott caldera contains between 20 and 40 million metric tons of lithium and the Thacker Pass deposit alone may represent the world's largest measured lithium reserve. Nevada's basin and range geology added another advantage through block faulting that created closed basins where lithium-rich fluids naturally pool and concentrate. At Clayton Valley, these underground brines reach concentrations of 200 to 1400 milligrams per liter, rivaling South America's famous lithium triangle. The state's bone-dry climate means natural evaporation does much of the concentration work without requiring energy input, and a mining workforce dating back to the Comstock Lode Silver Rush of 1859 means the expertise already exists here. Here's where the numbers get uncomfortable. The United States currently imports more than half its lithium, with Chile providing about 50% and Argentina 47% of those imports. The U.S. Geological Survey's January 2025 data shows American lithium resources at 19 million metric tons and reserves at 1.8 million tons, representing 16.5% of global resources, but only 6% of global reserves. The entire country has exactly one producing lithium mine. Silver Peak in Nevada's Clayton Valley has operated since 1966, producing between 3,200 and 4,500 tons annually which amounts to less than 2% of global supply. That single operation accounts for all domestic production, and what it produces barely registers against what manufacturers need. Australia's spodumene hard rock mining generates 48% of global production, but burns three times more carbon than brine operations. South America's lithium triangle achieves lower costs, but consumes approximately 500,000 gallons of water per ton extracted. Nevada's deposits offer a different path, one that sits on American soil with established property rights in proximity to the factories that need the material. The Thacker Pass project in Humboldt County represents the single largest bet on American lithium production in decades, and construction crews broke ground in a big way during May of 2025 with the first permanent concrete pour at the processing plant. The scale demands attention, Proven and probable reserves sit at 14.3 million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent, with a phase one price tag of approximately $2.93 billion. The Department of Energy committed $2.26 billion in loans that closed in October 2024, marking the largest federal investment 
ever made in a lithium mine. General Motors bought in for $625 million, securing a 38% ownership stake. Jonathan Evans, president and CEO of Lithium Americas, announced in May 2025 that major construction had commenced and the first significant milestone had been achieved with initial permanent concrete placement. By June, 300 manual craft workers were on site, with projections exceeding 1,000 by year's end. Design work reached approximately 70% completion, and structural steel fabrication kicked off in April. When Phase 1 reaches full capacity, Thacker Pass will produce 40,000 tons of battery-grade lithium carbonate annually, which translates to 8 to 10 times the current total output of the entire United States. The mine holds permits for 40 years of operation, with resource potential stretching to 85 years. 1,800 construction jobs will peak in 2026, transitioning to 360 permanent operations positions once production begins in 2028. About 200 miles south sits another deposit that caught federal attention in October 2024, when the Bureau of Land Management approved Ioneer's Rhyolite Ridge project, making it the first lithium operation greenlit during the Biden administration. The geology here differs from anything else on the continent. Rhyolite Ridge contains one of only two known lithium boron deposits on Earth and the only one in North America, allowing simultaneous production of battery materials and industrial boric acid from the same operation. The mineral resource totals 360 million tons, containing 3.4 million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. James Calloway, Ioneer's executive chairman, put it bluntly when approval came through, saying he could state with absolute confidence that few deposits in the world match Rhyolite Ridge's potential and calling it the culmination of countless hours of work by a dedicated team. The Department of Energy extended up to $996 million. In loans that closed in January 2025, annual targets include 20,600 tons of lithium carbonate or hydroxide alongside 174,000 tons of boric acid, enough battery material for roughly 370,000 electric vehicles every year. Ford Motor Company signed an offtake agreement, as did Prime Planet Energy and Solutions the Toyota Panasonic joint venture, and Nevada-based Dragonfly Energy. Construction starts in 2025, with production slated for 2028. Beyond the two flagship operations, several other projects are advancing through various stages. American Lithium Corporation's TLC project near Tonopah holds approximately 10 million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent in resources, and a water reservation agreement signed in September 2025 locked in rights for future development. Century Lithium completed a feasibility study in April 2024 for their Angel Island project, confirming proven and probable reserves of 287.65 million tons. Production would reach 34,000 tons annually over a 40-year mine life using a proprietary chloralkali process combined with direct lithium extraction technology. American battery technology company's Tonopah Flats earned transparency priority status on the federal FAST-41, permitting dashboard in June 2025. With resources exceeding 6 billion tons and a projected net present value of $4.67 billion. Add all these projects together and Nevada could produce over 150,000 tons annually by the mid-2030s completely reshaping America's position in global supply chains. Nevada's geological diversity means three different extraction methods are being deployed across the state, each with distinct advantages and drawbacks. Silver Peak has used traditional brine evaporation since 1966, pumping saline groundwater through approximately 49 active wells into 4,000 acres of evaporation ponds. Solar energy concentrates the lithium over 12 to 24 months after which soda ash precipitates the final product. The method has yielded over 300 million pounds of lithium carbonate, but only achieves about 50% recovery while consuming enormous land area. Thacker Pass will employ sulfuric acid leaching on clay deposits using hydraulic shovels to remove lithium-bearing material that gets converted to slurry and mixed with acid. The operation will burn 680,000 tons of sulfur every year to generate the processing chemicals needed. Direct lithium extraction represents the newest approach. Neolith Energy's pilot plant in Clayton Valley 
achieves 96% lithium recovery, nearly double what evaporation manages, while producing lithium 500 times faster and using only 10% of the land. The technology extracts lithium in hours rather than months, potentially transforming project economics across Nevada's brine deposits. Opposition to Nevada's lithium rush runs deep, particularly at Thacker Pass. The mine will pump 2,600 acre-feet of water annually during initial operations, rising to 5,200 acre-feet at full capacity, roughly 1.7 billion gallons. The Environmental Protection Agency issued strong criticism of the Bureau of Land Management's water analysis in January 2021, warning that antimony groundwater contamination could persist for at least 300 years. Wildlife concerns include disturbance to over 2,800 acres of greater sage-grouse habitat, impacts on golden eagle breeding sites, and threats to an endangered endemic spring snail called the King's River Perg that exists only in the Thacker Pass area. Local rancher Edward Bartell documented declining spring flows and won a partial victory in April 2025 when a Nevada court reversed two water permits finding the state engineer's determination lacked scientific foundation. Lithium Americas later purchased Bartel's water rights as part of a settlement. The indigenous opposition carries weight that legal challenges alone cannot capture. Multiple tribes, including the Reno Sparks Indian Colony, Burns Paiute Tribe, and Summit Lake Paiute Tribe, have fought the project. The site bears the Paiute name Pihimuhu, meaning rotten moon, and holds profound cultural significance. On September 12th, 1865, the 1st Nevada Cavalry attacked a Paiute camp at this exact location, killing between 31 and 70 men, women, children, and elders. The Bureau of Land Management's own 2022 survey identified at least five sites potentially eligible for federal preservation, including the massacre grounds. Arlen Melendez, chairman of the Reno Sparks Indian Colony, stated that the BLM failed in its trust responsibility and that ancestors' final resting places were being destroyed. A February 2025 report from Human Rights Watch and the ACLU found the mine received permits without meaningful indigenous consultation and without free, prior, and informed consent, noting that direct tribal contact during the permitting process consisted of three rounds of mailings to three tribal governments sent during the COVID-19 pandemic. Every tribal lawsuit has failed. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld the approval in July 2023, and while the Fort McDermott Paiute Shoshone Tribal Council signed a community benefits agreement with Lithium Americas in October 2022, internal opposition remains strong. Rhyolite Ridge faces separate controversy over TM's buckwheat, an endangered wildflower whose only known population on Earth grows at the project site. The Center for Biological Diversity filed suit in October 2024, challenging the permit. Nevada stands alone as the only U.S. state active across all seven stages of the lithium supply chain, from exploration through extraction, processing, chemical manufacturing, component production, battery assembly, and recycling. The state brands this the Lithium Loop, the only complete cradle-to-grave battery supply chain in America. Tesla's Gigafactory Nevada anchors the ecosystem, consuming battery materials at massive scale. Redwood Materials in Carson City operates the first commercial-scale battery recycling facility, capable of competing with primary mining, founded by former Tesla executive J.B. Straubel, and activated with its first commercial cathode production line in March 2024. Redwood achieves 95% lithium recovery while using 80% less energy producing 70% fewer carbon emissions and consuming 80% less water than traditional mining. The Department of Energy extended a $2 billion conditional loan commitment in February 2023, recognizing the operation's strategic value. Copper development adds another layer. Electric vehicles require four times more copper than conventional cars, and the Yarrington Copper Project released a pre-feasibility study in September 2025 establishing reserves exceeding 500 million tons. Everything happening in Nevada right now represents a massive wager on energy demand. Lithium prices have collapsed 80% from 2022 peaks, forcing Sabania Stillwater to exit the Rhyolite Ridge joint venture in February 2025. Projects moving forward today are banking on the International Energy Agency's projection 
that lithium demand must increase sevenfold by 2035 to meet climate targets. Total private investment in Nevada's 2nd Congressional District, tied to the Inflation Reduction Act, has reached $6.6 .6 billion in actual spending, with $11.2 billion announced. The strategic logic remains clear regardless of price fluctuations. Reducing dependence on Chinese supply chains ensures continued federal support. Nevada's lithium will come out of the ground. That much seems certain. The unresolved question is whether extraction can proceed with genuine community consent and acceptable environmental impact. A state built on silver and gold now finds itself at the center of a new mineral rush, one that will shape whether America can manufacture energy independence domestically. Drilling continues across the high desert, construction crews pour concrete and raise steel, and somewhere in the ground beneath Nevada, the materials that might finally end the oil era are slowly coming to the surface. If you found this look at Nevada's lithium revolution worth your time, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss our next deep dive into the industries reshaping the modern world.